بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وآله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the Fiqh of Hadith class We're still in the same book, Amdatul Ahkam And now we will move from the book of prayer to the book of Zakah And we're now in Hadith number 169 Narrated Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما When Allah's Apostle صلى الله عليه وسلم sent Mu'adh to Yemen he said to him, you're going to people of book. First of all, invite them to worship Allah. And when they come to know that, to know Allah, when they agree on that, when they testify, inform them that Allah has enjoined on them five prayers in every day and night. So, we talked about this hadith several times, priorities in da'wah, what do you start with? You start with the main issue, main principle, the oneness of Allah, and you don't waste your time in other things. But why this hadith is mentioned here? Because of what comes next. After prayer, and if they start offering these prayers, inform them that Allah has enjoined upon them zakah. And that's the main point in the hadith. Why it is mentioned at the beginning of this chapter to tell you the obligation of zakah. Why zakah is mandatory? Allah says in the Quran, Aqimu salah wa atu zakah. Establish prayer and give zakah. Here in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ also mentioned that zakah is mandatory. What about zakah? What is it? Again, it clarifies it here. And it is to be taken. The zakah is to be taken from the rich amongst them and given to the poor amongst them. That's the whole purpose of the zakah, social reform. It is to help the society. And that's why it says it's taken from the rich amongst them and it is given back to the poor amongst them. So it is not something that you're giving to me. It is not a favor that you're doing to me. I'm not taking your zakah money for my own welfare. It is for the community. So why we pay zakah? To help others. It is taken from the rich amongst them and it is given to the poor amongst them. And if they obey you, once they obey you and they know that zakah is mandatory and it is taken from the rich and it's given back to the poor of them, take zakah from them and avoid. This is another instruction. Avoid the best property of the people as zakah. This is explicit in zakah but it is general also in everything now you want to pay the zakah what kind of money that you pay for zakah you have 40 sheep those sheep are average what does that mean there is the young there is the old there is the good there is the weak but you have one special sheep that you love why very big produces lots of milk, and so on and so forth. Imagine someone came and took that sheep as zakah. What will happen? Now, what is the zakah on 40 sheep? One. You have to pay one sheep. You already forgot? One sheep. But does it have to be that sheep? Actually, it is against the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to take that very sheep. Why? What, what would that man do? Would he appreciate the zakah? No. And in general also, not only in zakah, in any other thing, do not come to people in a way that they, it will make them hate the religion. Yes, you want to implement the religion, but don't do it in a way that they will hate it. The fard, what is mandatory is to take one sheep, but it is not that sheep. Prophet ﷺ told him, وَإِيَّاكَ وَكَرَائِمَ أَمْوَالِهِمْ Avoid the valuable property that they have. You have lots of money, lots of assets also. And the zakah was estimated $150,000. That is only the zakah. MashaAllah, you have $20 million. So the zakah is only $150,000. So you took the money that this man wanted instead of taking something that he tried to offer. Zakah is to be taken from the average. Not the 
best money and not the lowest. It is the average. So the zakah, the obligation of zakah is in this hadith, how it is mandatory, it is taken from the rich and it is given back to the poor. It is not taken from the rich and it is given back to the rich or it is not taken from the poor. In some countries that's what happens. Poor people are taxed, rich people are exempt. Once you, you get $40,000, it is 10% tax. Once you get $200,000, or above it is 5% or less. There is a study about taxes and the owner of the work was the least who paid the zakah. All his employees were paying more tax than he was. So this is, this is Islam, that's the purpose of the zakah and that's how zakah is taken. The next hadith, hadith number 170, hadith Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu an. Allah's apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no zakah is imposed on less than five awsuq. La zakata fi madun khamsati awsuq. What is the wasaq? Hmm? What is the wasaq? Students who studied zakah several times. Hello. Sixty sa. Very good, Alia. Each wasak is sixty sa. 60 times 5, that is what? 300. 300 sa times 5, approximately 1,500 pounds. Approximately. That's the approximate weight of zakah. So if you have less than 1,500 dates, do you pay zakah? No. No zakah is imposed on less than 5 awsuq of wariq. What is wariq? Silver. Although we already mentioned, what is the measurement of the zakah in silver? Hmm? On silver, what's the threshold of zakah in silver? What is the th threshold? If you got less than that, you don't pay zakah. 595, very good. 595 grams, this is 600 grams. Times 2.2, that is approximately what? 1300, so it is close. And no zakah is imposed on less than 5 camels. What is the zakah on 5 camels? One camel. Do you agree on this falsehood? On five camels. One sheep. One sheep. Seems you studied very well in the break, mashallah. One sheep. What's the purpose of this hadith? To tell you that there is a threshold. There is a mount that you have to reach in order for zakah to become mandatory. First, it gave you the obligation of zakah. Here, it gives you the thresholds of the things that were you need to pay the zakah. The next hadith, narrated Abu Huraira, radiallahu an. Allah's Apostle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لَيْسَ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِ فِي عَبْدِهِ وَلَا فَرَسِهِ صَدَقَةً There is no zakah either on a horse 
or a slave belonging to a Muslim. In the exam, I asked you, what's the ruling on the zakah on horses? And I wanted your opinion. I did not ask for the difference of opinions amongst scholars. But most of you said there is difference of opinions. I don't want that. I want what you believe. Based on this hadith, is there zakah on horses? Is there zakah? No, there is no zakah. So if you have 10 horses, do you pay zakah? No. What about the slave? You have five slaves. One to drive you, one to wash your clothes, one to cook for you, one to open the door and close the door, one to answer the phones. Do you pay zakah on those? No, you don't pay zakah. If you pay zakah, how you pay zakah on the slave? You give his finger or his hand. There is no zakah on the abd. What about the horse? Again, based on this hadith, that's the opinion of the vast majority of scholars. And that's the correct opinion. Because once we have a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ, then that's it. There is no zakah on horses. While Abu Hanifa rahimahullah said there is zakah. They're just like camels. Probably he did not hear of this hadith. So now we know what is subject to zakah and what is not. Next hadith, narrated again Abu Huraira radiallahu an. Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, there is no compensation for one killed or wounded by an animal or by falling in a wall. or because of working in mines. But hummus, one-fifth, is compulsory on rikaz. Why this hadith is mentioned? The last portion of this hadith is what we're concerned about. If you found, what is rikaz? Treasure. Hmm? Treasure, what kind of treasure? Something that you find, you, you, you dig and you find. What do you pay? 2.5%? One-fifth. What is one-fifth? Hmm? 20% every year? One time. Exactly. That is the payment of the zakah. What does the beginning of the hadith mean? There is no compensation for one killed or wounded by an animal or by falling in a well. You have a well, right? Well of water. Someone came and he did not see that well and he fell in it and he died. Are you liable? Hmm? No? Why you're not liable? Who killed him? Had there not been a wall, a well there, would this man have been killed? No. So aren't you the cause? Is it an exception here? It depends. It's an exception where, where this basically lifts the liability on the one who acts normally in his position. You built a well, or you dug a well, you have a well of water. Now, it was his negligence that caused this. But if you go and dig a well in front of the common street, and people going and coming, and everyone is falling, 
Are you liable? Of course. Of course you are. But this, in general, the same thing for the animal. Now, even the animal, you, you have a horse. That horse kicked a man. And this man died. Are you liable? Or no? The Prophet ﷺ says no. But there are cases where you are liable. But in general, you're not liable. Why? As long as this was caused by a regular thing. What does it mean, Jubar? The hadith in Arabic says, Al-Ajma'u Jubar. Wafirrikaz al-Khumus. Jubar means hadr, means there is nothing in it. Okay, the next hadith, hadith 173, narrated Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sent Umar for collecting the sadaqah, the zakah. And it was said that Ibn Jamil, Khalid ibn al-Walid, and Al-Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Refused to pay it. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? Upon this, the Messenger ﷺ said, Ibn Jamil is taking revenge, but for this, that he was destitute and Allah made him rich. As regards to Khalid, you are unjust to Khalid, for he reserved his armors and weapons for the sake of Allah. And as for Al-Abbas, I shall be responsible for it and an equal amount along with it. And he again said, Umar, bear this in mind. The uncle of a person is like his father. Ya Umar, ama alimta anna amma rajul sinu abih? What does this hadith say? This hadith is about the collection of the zakah. How zakah is taken. Now we knew who is liable for zakah. We knew what is the threshold of the zakah. We knew the types that is subject to zakah. How the zakah is taken. From this hadith we learn that the zakah is to be taken through an agent for the Islamic State, for the Khalifa, for the Amir. Does it have to be automatically paid from someone? No, not necessarily. You are liable for the zakah. But it is the responsibility also of the imam to come and collect it from you. And this is exactly what happened here. Who was in charge? Umar radiallahu anhu. The Prophet ﷺ sent many people. Here in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ sent Umar radiallahu Now, we have an issue here. When the collector of the zakah goes and takes the zakah, what if someone said, I paid the zakah, or someone refused the zakah, what do you do? You are acting on behalf of the head of the state. So what do you do? Do you let him? So you come back with nothing? Or you take it from him? Or what do you do? Your job is to collect the zakah. And you report to the leader. He takes actions. You don't take actions. Now, when he came, this is what the hadith says. And it was said. So people would say, Ibn Jamil, Khalid ibn al-Walid, and Al-Abbas. Three people 
refused to pay. Did they really refuse to pay the zakah or no? We don't know. But from the hadith, later on, we know that they did not really refuse to pay the zakah. They were suffering injustice from people. So sometimes people say things that are not true. Even during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. What about Ibn Jamil? The Prophet ﷺ said, Ibn Jamil is taking revenge. مَا يَنْقَمُ بْنُ جَمِيلٍ إِلَّا أَنْ كَانَ فَقِيرًا فَأَغْنَاهُ اللَّهِ He was poor and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him money. What about Khalid? The Prophet ﷺ said, you are unjust to Khalid. So, he did not really refuse to pay the zakah. He held his shields, his armors, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he is paying. Now, what does that mean? Umar went to collect the zakah. And you refused. Or you, you did not give him the zakah. He came to report that. In this hadith, they say it is the option of the payer of the zakah to pay directly. And that is your option. You don't have to give it to someone, to the collector. As long as the head or the one in charge knows about your situation, it is permissible. And that's exactly what happened. People claimed or they said that those people did not pay the zakah. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? You are unjust because he did indeed pay the zakah. Or he is not liable for the zakah. Whatever is the case, he knows about it. You did not have to report it to the collector of the zakah. Scholars have lots of lessons from this hadith about collecting the zakah, how you pay the zakah. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? Khalid did his part. He gave away his shields, his armors for the sake of Allah. What about Al-Abbas, the Prophet ﷺ? Because what's the relationship between Al-Abbas and the Prophet ﷺ? Al-Abbas is the uncle of the Messenger ﷺ. So he said, whatever Al-Abbas owes, I will pay it and what? And I will pay another amount, the, the same. So I will pay what? Twice. I will pay twice. Then what did the Prophet ﷺ say at the end of the hadith? It cl clarified that the uncle is like what? The father. This is very eloquent statement from the Prophet ﷺ. In case of custody, in case of inheritance, in case of many, many things. Wali. Who's the wali? If the father is not there, the grandfather. Prophet ﷺ said, أَمَا شَعَرْتَ أَنَّ عَمَّ الرَّجُلُ صِنْوَ أَبِيهِ The uncle, which uncle the Prophet ﷺ is talking about here? Paternal uncle. The father's brother is just like what? The father. So this, there are many rulings based on that. In regards to the mother, who is like the mother? The aunt. Which aunt? Maternal aunt. The mother's sister. الْخَالَ بِمَنْزِلَةِ الْأُمْ Again, this is also another ruling. But here in, this, here in this hadith, what we're concerned about is the zakah. How the zakah is paid. What about paying the zakah? Also, you learn from this that sometimes there will be dispute between the collector of the zakah and the payer of the zakah. Who judges? The imam, the ruler, whoever in charge. The collector of the zakah acts only. And he takes the zakah. The collector of the zakah does not have the right to wage war, to fight. It happened during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, some people just refused to pay the zakah. The collector only came and said, this is what happened. So this hadith is merely about the collection of the zakah. Next hadith, narrated Abdullah bin Zayd, radiallahu anh, when the messenger of Allah ﷺ conquered Hunayn, he distributed the booty and he bested upon those whose hearts it was intended to win. What does that mean? Who are they? 
they are what we call al muallafa qulubuhum those people that you want to win or to gain their hearts why this hadith is mentioned here because they are one of recipients of the zakah are they until now the majority of scholars say yes until now you could still pay some scholars said no after islam became strong you don't pay people of the zakah so anyways the prophet sallallahu gave those people it was conveyed to him to the prophet sallallahu that the ansar cherished a desire that they should be given also from the portion which the people of Quraysh had got. The Prophet ﷺ, most the recipients of those money were what? From Quraysh. So the Ansar were a little bit unhappy with that. They felt that they also deserved the money. Upon this, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ stood up and after having praised Allah and lauded him, addressed them. He talked to them. بعد الحمد لله والثناء عليه يا معشر الأنصار O people of Ansar Did I not find you erring and Allah guided you right through me? And did I not find you in a state of fighting or being destitute and Allah made you free from what? From what? Through me? And in a state of this unity, division, and Allah united you through me. And they said, Allah and His Messenger are most benevolent. The Prophet ﷺ said, Why do you not answer me? They said, Allah wa Rasuluhu aman. Allah and His Messenger are most benevolent. He said, If you wish, you should say so and so, and the event should take such and such course. Means you are telling the truth. If you say, that you were alone and we supported you, you were chased and we protected you. The Prophet ﷺ further said, Don't you feel happy that the people should go away with goats and camels and you go to your places along with the Messenger of Allah? The Ansar are inner garments and other people are outer garments. Had there not been immigration or migration, I would have been a man from the Ansar. If the people were to tread a valley or a narrow path way, I would tread a valley, I will take the valley of the Ansar. And you would soon find after me preferences, differences. So you should show patience till you meet me at the Hawd. This is a great, very, very great hadith, but here it came for a particular reason. Now, again, beautiful story, what happened after the Battle of Hunayn, when people were given money by the Prophet ﷺ, and the Ansar felt that they deserve this money. They are the ones, they are the cause for all this to happen. Had they not supported the Prophet ﷺ from the beginning, there will not have been all these battles and all these openings to the Messenger of Sallallahu And now, in return, they are not getting anything. So they spoke. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi heard that. So he gathered the Ansar. And that's the wisdom of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He verified first. But let's go back again. The point in this hadith is in the action of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What did he do with the money? This hadith is to tell you that it is the right of the Imam to divide the zakah. Remember the issue? Does it have to be divided eight equal shares on the recipients? Or the Imam can act based on the necessity, based on the need. Here in this hadith, we learn that the Prophet ﷺ gave many people money from the share of the Mu'allafa Qulubuhum. So it is the right of the Imam. Now let's say there is two million dollars in Baytul Mal in the Treasury Department of Muslims. And the Imam decided that one and a half millions will be paid 
for that project. Although there are 2,000 poor families and only the rest, 500,000, will be paid for the poor families. Is it his choice? Is it his call to make or he has to divide it equally? Based on this hadith, we learn that it is the choice of the imam. That's what he, he did. He was able to give the ansar, but he did not. He gave only those people. So they felt a little bit in their hearts that this is not the correct thing that should have happened. And they spoke about it. This shows you also that the ansar are human beings. They are companions of the Prophet ﷺ, but still they are human beings. They are just like us. They have emotions. And they felt something in their hearts that they should have gotten from this money. So the Prophet ﷺ gathered them. And he told them, Isn't it that the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you were divided and you were guided by me, and that also shows you that no matter whatever you give for Islam, you are getting ten times more. In the case of the Ansar, no one gave more than them. They gave shelter to the Prophet ﷺ. They gave up their lives. And in the time that it was needed most. Now, if someone gives his life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of one point something billion people, it's not that significant. While at that time, when you give shelter, where there is no one else is able to give shelter. So it is a big deal. But at the same time, you are more blessed with that. So the Prophet wasallam reminded them of that and also he mentioned the superiority of the Ansar when the Prophet ﷺ said Al-Ansaru Shi'ar Wal-Nathu Wal-Nasu Dithar that people are outer garment and you are what? You are the inner garment. So you are more close to the Prophet ﷺ. That's why many scholars said one sign of hypocrisy and disbelief is to hate the Ansar. If you are a true believer, you have to love the Ansar. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ loved them. He said they are the inner garment and that's the closest thing. Just like when you have this, that's what is shown to people. And you have inner thing that is closer to your body. So that was the rank of the Ansar to the Prophet ﷺ. And also, in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that his love is for the Ansar. But if his love was for the Ansar, then why they were not given the money? This is again telling you that love does not mean always money. Actually, love sometimes means not to give money. Because other people who were weak in Iman, they were given the money to strengthen their Iman. While the Ansar had the strong Iman. So they did not need any tool, any means to strengthen their Iman further. They had the Iman, the belief in Allah and the Messenger wasallam. Also in this hadith, it shows the love of the Prophet wasallam to the Ansar by making a choice that if people took one path, and the Ansar took a different path. Which path the Prophet ﷺ will take? The path of the Ansar. That shows how much the Prophet ﷺ loved them. And eventually it shows also how much the Ansar had of the Iman, of the strong Iman. That the Prophet ﷺ was not yet over and they shed tears out of love to the Prophet ﷺ. Because they did not know what to say and they felt the love of the Prophet ﷺ. Because he, he reminded them, what is the value? What about five or fifty or hundred camels? Do you spare this for the love of the Prophet ﷺ? Aren't you happy that people take those camels, they go back with this money, and you go back with the Messenger ﷺ, which is more valuable to you? And all the Ansar were happy with that speech, with what the Prophet ﷺ said. Again, this, this hadith is very, very great hadith. Its place is in Sira, its place is in the battles. But it is mentioned here also to deduce fiqh ruling about the zakah. The next hadith, hadith ibn Umar, radiallahu anhumah, 
Allah the Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam farada Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sadaqat al-fitr enjoined the payment of one sa'a of dates or one sa'a of barley as zakat al-fitr. Now this is zakah, but what kind of zakah? Fitr. That's particular zakah. Zakah after Ramadan. On every Muslim, slave or free, male or female, young or old, and he ordered that it be paid before the people went out to offer the Eid prayer. So you know who's eligible to pay the zakah, when it should be paid, and how much is it, and what's the ruling of that activity. What's the ruling on Sadaqat al-Fitr? It is obligatory. What's the amount of it? One sa, four muds, which is approximately five pounds. Who's eligible? Who should pay it? Every Muslim. Every Muslim. What time? It should be paid for the Eid prayer. So this hadith is very concise and it outlines the, uh, all the elements of Sadaqat al-Fitr or Zakat al-Fitr. The next hadith, hadith 176, narrated Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anh, we used to give one sa'a of food or one sa'a of dates or one sa'a of barley or one sa'a of raisins as Sadaqat al-Fitr. So what types of food can you give? Food in general, food, essential food, dates, barley, raisins. Can raisins be given? Yes. Just like dates. Why? Because they could be saved. And they could be essential food. One sa'a. Now when, when a companion says we used, we used to give one sa'a. What does that mean? When? During the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Although this is from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, but it is considered as if it is marfu' to the Prophet ﷺ. It is not mursal, it is marfu'. Always, when we use to do this, that means during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And when Muawiyah became the Khalifa, and the wheat was available in abundance, he said, I think one mud of wheat equals two moods of any of the abo uh, above mentioned things. Which is more valuable, wheat or barley? Wheat. So Muawiyah looked for what? For the value. He said one mud is equal to two mud. So how much you pay of wheat? Half sa. That was the opinion of Muawiyah. So what do you say? Do you look for the amount or you look for the value? There is another narration. Abu Sa'id Radilan says, as for me, I will pay it as I used to pay it at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Now dates, are they the same as barley? Are they the same as raisins? No. So the Prophet Sallallahu did not say it is one sa' from this and one sa' and third from that or three quarters of sa'a, it is one sa'a, so that's what you should pay, regardless of what, the value. That's why it is not correct to say zakat al-fitr is eight dollars or nine dollars or whatever. You should look for the amount. That's what the hadith basically says. And with this, inshallah, we'll conclude with the book of zakat from Umdat al-Ahkam. Any questions? Okay, salam alaikum wa rahmatullah.